Okay, today we're going to be talking about replacing this. This is the, uh, the steering rack out of this Ford, front-wheel drive Ford Mondeo. Um, the thing about front-wheel drives is that to make enough room to uh, get this out, you need to lower the front subframe. Uh, so it's a bit of a project. Let's get on with it. I've been over this in the other videos about the uh, tie rods, but the specific problem I had with my rack was uh, play in the rack bar, which shows up in horizontal looseness that you can see right at the road wheel. If you grab it at uh, nine and three like this and you try to rock it back and forth, if you do it vertically and it's okay, then uh, that suggests that something's moving in the steering. Uh, commonly, it's going to be a uh, tie rod ball joint, either in or outer, but until you start working your way in from the outside, you can't really tell straight away. And one hint that it's the rack is if there's play on the driver's side of the car, but nothing on the other side, uh, that's because the racks tend to give out on the steering column side where that meets the gear. So that was the case for me, and uh, that's the bad news. Now just before I start hammering at things, uh, for the sake of safety, uh, see here how I've lifted the front of the car quite high. Uh, the rear wheels are chocked uh, with the handbrake on hard. And also see that the jack remains in place on the, uh, on the one side. And also I've put the front wheels under the chassis as a you know, sort of final safeguard. Uh, you also need a stable hard ground. Um, I'm confident in this setup. You need to be in yours too. Firstly, I uh, took off the outer tie rods. Uh, I've covered this in several other videos at this stage, so I'm not going to elaborate on it here. Uh, so if you need to see the details, uh, please pause here and go watch separately. I'll place links in the description below. When I ordered my uh, new rack, which was a reconditioned job, it came with uh, new inner tie rods, but not outers. Um, but I replaced these uh, my outer rods um, only a few years ago, so I'm just going to reuse them. Uh, if all of your hardware is equally old, you might want to take the opportunity to put new ones on at the same time. Um, if you are reusing them, then take care not to damage anything, uh, particularly the threaded rod on the spindle here, uh, if you're hitting it with a hammer to get it out. Uh, also, count the turns required to take it off the inner rod so that you can put it back in the uh, same position later. Right, on most uh, front wheel drive cars, the rack is bolted in place on top of the cross frame here, and it's pretty inaccessible to start with. So I wanted to check I could uh, loosen the bolts there before I did other work, um, as I knew that they're seriously torqued tight. Uh, but I found that I couldn't even get a basic socket and bar onto these. Um, you see on the steering side, the bar hits this uh, stupid plastic shrouding, which is a source of pain throughout this job. And on the other side, it would uh, just, just fit on, but um, not really any room to turn it. So, need to lower it all down. And uh, this is necessary anyway, in order to make enough room to get it all out later. And obviously the rack is connected to the steering column, but you see it's connected via a coupling, which is totally inaccessible to start with. And even if you were able to magic it apart somehow, the uh, column side of the rack itself still sticks up enough that it wouldn't allow the rack to slide out unless it's lowered down quite a lot. So to start that process, the first thing to do is to uh, disconnect the flexible steering shaft inside the car. Uh, that's just a small hex. Uh, it might be uh, quite tight though, so use a good quality socket on it and remove the little bolt fully. Once it's out, the shaft fitting is uh, hinged and it rotates away from the triangular stud, like so. And now the rack outside is uh, mechanically disconnected and can be lowered down. To do that, I'm talking about lowering the whole front subframe, uh, which is a little project, as you'll see. To do it, you'll need to uh, work the big boy 21 millimeter bolts in all four corners. Uh, this is one of the rear ones. Uh, they go straight up through the big bushing into the chassis. I did spray these with penetrating oil a few days before trying to turn them. Um, as if you uh, look online, you'll find many lacrimose tales of these bolts being seized in efforts to turn them instead ripping apart the threaded bit inside the car, uh, after which they'll just turn forever and you, uh, you won't be happy because you will have to um, cut into the car from the top to get access to all that. Um, it also happens that my uh, jack handle makes a nice uh, cheap bar. Slightly ridiculous, but it works. Just make sure that your socket is good quality, preferably a six-side hex, and it's on the uh, bolt head dead square so as not to go rounding it. And all I'm doing here to start with is loosening them all, just to check that they do crack loose at first. 
Now the front ones are uh, reset up higher uh, next to the um, wheel arch. And by the way, obviously I've taken out the plastic liner inside the right hand wheel well here. So th these bolts you can sort of access directly from the side through this opening. Uh, but there won't be much room to actually turn them if you try that. So it's best to have a decent 12 or 18 inch uh, extension bar and you go up from the bottom like this and then you've got all the room you want for swinging the cheap bar around. Now once I'd cracked all those loose without breaking anything, the uh, the front ones do want loosening uh, just a few turns. I'm not actually undoing these. Uh, all I'm doing is slacking them off enough to allow the frame to uh, tilt down from the back without stressing anything here. So you just want to open up enough of a gap, you know, see here between the bushing, just to allow a bit of a pivot. Uh, don't do too much, or you're going to risk damaging the bolt threads that remain because the uh, the weight of everything is is you know still hanging on them. Uh, also, the radiator and some other bits are sitting on the subframe, and you can't lower it much more than this without disconnecting all that. Uh, then the lower engine mount, uh, rather the torque restrictor on the gearbox, that needs to be disconnected because it attaches to the subframe. Uh, I took out the front bolt, but uh, as you can see, it doesn't swing loose until you also loosen the rear one. Now, this makes it easier to put back later, too. And then the in engine will swing a little bit loose, uh, but it's okay. And then the, uh, the last step is to disconnect this plug, which is for the uh, downstream O2 sensor on the exhaust. Um, I unplugged it, uh, but also freed up the cable that was clipped to the frame so that it won't get caught up. Okay, to actually lower the frame here, you'll need some bits and pieces. Uh, I scavenged a bit of 2x4 uh, pine that was ideal, and uh, you can see I used the car's roadside manual scissor jack. You want to put that beam back across the subframe, uh, but far enough forward that you don't block access to the bolts and the brackets. And then put the jack uh, dead center, uh, measure it if you, uh, if you want and lift it up until there's weight on everything. Now you don't want to try to lift the car obviously, but you want enough support that you know that the frame is uh, supported and it won't move when you take the bolts out. You want to make sure it's all good and solid and uh, nothing will be prone to slipping or getting kicked out accidentally. And then when ready, the bolts can come out all the way. Now just watch as you turn them that the bolt head comes away from the bracket and that the frame or bushing isn't chasing the bolt down as you turn it. That's to say that you can see here the wood is obviously taking the weight, okay. And once that big, uh, the main big bolt is out, then there are these additional two small bolts which hold on this uh, tie bracket. Uh, they need to come out and that bracket removed before the subframe is actually free. And then once you're 100% sure that everything is actually disconnected and clear, you can start to lower the jack. I'd uh, go slowly and just keep an eye on anything unexpected or any weird noises. Uh, you want to lower it as much as possible, but eventually the flexi joint on the exhaust will take up and it won't go anymore. If you get that far, just back it up a few turns on the jack so that the weight is back on the beam, and then that's it. You can go further by disconnecting more stuff, but I didn't need to. Now there's more space above the rack as it's been lowered down away from the firewall. Now I wanted to crack those bolts loose just to make sure that they weren't going to seize on me before I went any further. Um, that plastic shroud is still in the way. Uh, with the extra room it will push up a bit and uh, go loose, but there's uh, still not enough room to lift it clear. Now, on the passenger side I was now able to uh, turn the bolt easily enough. That's loose. On the driver's side, I could get the bar on the bolt head now, but the uh, next problem was inadequate room to actually turn the cheap bar. So um, I realized that this jack handle is silly, but the uh, the problem is actually just the slack and the lash and the handle itself with its articulating joint. Now, the ideal here would be a ring spanner with a really long handle, uh, because that's the only thing that would be stiff enough. Um, so in the end, I was able to just sort of brace myself in the wheel arch and just push super hard. Um, on the handle without the extension, and I did get it loose. Uh, again, your challenge here is to keep that socket on the bolt head square and not let it get tilted as you uh, force it because you can't um, you can't reach in and really get any counter force on it as you might normally. Uh, you can't actually remove the bolt uh, once it's loose because of the shroud, uh, but you wouldn't want to just yet, so um, I'll come back to it later. Uh, a minor thing is the little plastic clip which holds the power steering return line right in the uh, middle of the rack. It has a clip to the rear side which has to be released by uh, prying it open with a blade from the top like so. 
Next, you'll uh, want to drain the fluid out of the system. Um, on this car, there's a dedicated drain hose uh, plumbed into the union at the rack. It's easy to identify as it's this hose to nowhere, which is just clipped up next to the main hose, which comes from the pump. It has a metal plug in the end, uh, which is hose clamped in place, and you can release the clip with a blade like so. And if you're careful, that can be reused, so keep it safe. And then uh, my plug just uh, pried out easily enough. Uh, obviously, you'll need an oil drain pan here to let, all the old, let out the old fluid. And once the fluid's drained out from the pump and the hose, uh, what's drainable from the rack? Um, the plug can go back in. Uh, vice grips on that clamp will get it back on and uh, now you'll uh, get less of a mess when you disconnect the lines from the rack. To do that, there is a Torx head bolt which holds a steel place against the rack and that holds both the lines in the rack body. It's a bit tricky to access um, and you'll need torque bits to uh, suit a small ratchet handle. Um, I found it easiest to turn it from the bottom like this but that makes it harder to see the bolt. You will need a uh, torque wrench in here later to tighten it up so uh, work out um, what suits you. Uh, anyway, once that's out, then the hose fittings will just pull out. Um, they're just two nozzles with O-rings. Uh, you will get a bit more power steering fluid drain out, so have the drain pan underneath as you work them out. Ideally, you'd replace those O-rings, but I reused mine without any issue. Now, obviously, this fluid needs replacing, but notice here the bits of metal floating about in there. Uh, not a good sign and evidence of something not right in the rack, but I already knew that, I suppose. I'll show you flushing out the pump and hoses soon. Okay, you can take out the passenger side main bolt at any time, but the driver side one won't come out because it's blocked by the plastic shroud. And it turns out that you want it still in to hold the rack for the next step, which is to remove the flexible coupling uh, at the steering column. Now, if you grab that shroud and rotate it around 90 degrees so that the uh, lower part of it is pointing towards you at the driver's side, you'll gain an angle where you can actually see the coupling. Uh, that black rubber disc is part of it, although it's very awkward. And there's a bolt, uh, another torque socket at its base. And this bolt serves to clamp the coupling to the actual uh, pinion shaft that pokes out of the rack body, um, a bit like the articulating column fitting in the cabin. Uh, so if the steering is in the right place and the rack has been lowered away sufficiently, then there is actually a straight line that can be found sufficient for an extension bar to poke in there uh, and get clear enough of all obstructions so as to actually turn it. Now again, these bolts are torqued fairly tight, um, especially for their size, so you won't be turning them with a small handle or um, certainly not a screwdriver. The bolt has to be taken out completely, not just loosened, as it locks the coupling on the shaft and then it'll probably be quite stiff and the, uh, the coupling won't just pull off. I used a screwdriver blade to lever it up from the bottom and once it's moved enough then it will just lift clear. It's easiest to go around and do that from inside the cabin, you just pull it straight up and uh, you do have to remove it at this point because with it on still then uh, there's no way that the rack has space to be pulled out. And also with it gone, that horrible shroud will now also come out. Um, you could clean it up a bit before reinstalling it. You can see mine was starting to fall apart by the time I'd finished fighting with it. Uh, maybe some new tape there uh, around the edge would be an idea. Now this, uh, the foam is obviously the seal against the firewall and if it fails then um, you know, you'll get a lot more noise and maybe heat through uh, in the cabin. So you might even want to get a new one if it's really bad. Right, now that uh, last bolt will come out and finally the whole rack is now clear of all obstructions and you can start to work it out toward the driver's side. As you tip and tilt it, uh, you'll get more fluid drain out, so keep that oil pan underneath. And uh, there it is, the little bastard. So I bought a uh, reconditioned unit, uh, that usually means a re-chromed rack bar and new seals and bits. Not as good as brand new, obviously, but uh, hopefully better than one from a wrecker's which probably is not worth your time. Uh, obviously, check you have the identical part. Uh, I had to move across the clip for the return line, which is bolted on using the uh, the world's smallest hex head screw. The, old, the, uh, the reconditioned one didn't come with that. Um, and then there's also the question of the inner tie rods. Uh, you had to remove the outer rods at the start of the job, but as you can see here, I've removed the whole assembly as one with the inner rods. Um, 
My reconditioned rack came with the uh, inner rods, which were in much better condition than the old ones, but not assembled to the rack, so I did have to put them together. Uh, you might need to reuse your old ones if they're still good. Uh, I have a whole separate video on changing those inner rods, so again, please pause and go watch that if you need to. It's also possible that yours will just come with it all assembled, so you, you don't need to worry about it. And there's just uh, one more intermediary job to do before getting on with the, the reinstallation, and that's flushing the pump and uh, supply line with clean fluid if you need to. So if a rack has died like mine, uh, it commonly uh, contaminates the rest of the system with the bits of uh, metal, the uh, sort of wear from the old one, um, which you don't want floating about in the new system. So short of replacing everything, uh, you can just use the pump to run some clean fluid as a flush. Now you need to uh, disconnect the return hose from the tank on the pump and block up the tank port and uh, then fill the tank as much as you can with clean fluid and then what you do is just run the engine for a few seconds that's enough and the high pressure line will spray fluid out through the uh, the high pressure line at the bottom so there is a filter in that tank uh, but you'd have to replace the whole tank to renew it and again i did a uh, separate video on this job specifically so go watch that for more detail well, another good practice is to check the uh, various bolts here. These little ones are the only thing keeping your steering wheel connected to the rack, so you do not want them falling off. They all have old thread lock on them, which needs to be cleaned off before you put them back in. Uh, ideally, you would replace the bolts, but so long as there's no damage to the threads and you do clean off that thread locker, then you may judge them good. So I just used a wire brush to clean them all. Um, a power tool helps. And uh, I sprayed them down with brake clean. As you can see, they came up looking good. So now the process of uh, reversal begins. It can be tough maneuvering the assembly back in. The, uh, the tie rods might want to get hung up on things. I got it in a rough position and then put the bolts back in. Now remember this uh, driver side bolt has to be in place before the shroud goes back on. Although they, uh, they don't have to be threaded in just yet. So leaving them loose allowed me to uh, sort of rock it and move it around and make more room to get that shroud back on. And then the uh, the flexible coupling, I fed it through from the cabin side again, as I think that's easiest. Now make sure the orientation is right. The triangle shape is obvious, but it's uh, hard to see anything. And now it's crucial to make sure that this coupling is uh, all the way down before you try to insert the bolt. And you can see here that it is not. The, uh, the flats of that shaft need to be out of sight before it's right. Now, because it's stiff, it probably won't just push on by hand, so I used a few uh, gentle taps from a hammer, and you can see there it has now bottomed out. So this is the abomination of the, uh, the Torx bit attached to about three different adapters and extensions that I used. Um, definitely use some uh, thread locker. This is blue Loctite and you'll need a torque wrench or two for uh, all of these bolts going back in. Now you absolutely need to ensure that you tighten them enough because uh, you know because they're quite small bolts you don't want to risk over tightening and stripping any of the threads but by the same token you need to make sure that they are in fact done up tight enough. Um, and so that extension arrangement allowed me to again get um, out into clear space where I could use the big torque wrench um, that I have that made life easier. The torque spec on this particular bolt is 25 newton meters. And again, you can double check visually just to see that the bolt is clamped down and the coupling is in the right position. Then it was time to uh, do the mounting, the, the mounting bolts. Uh, thread them both in by hand and check that the rack is sitting square and happy. And then you'll need to set the torque wrench to 130 newton meters, which is no joke. Now I found the uh, the problem at the driver side that I had, you know, getting it undone returned again, which is to say that Ford sometimes designs stuff in a very stupid manner. Uh, on this rack, they've put the mount bolt so close to the steering column that they had to form a recess in the column just to clear the bolt head. But apparently it didn't occur to them to allow for tools to work the bolt. So the breaker bar uh, would just fit in there as you saw before, but the, the torque wrench head with the, uh, the ratchet on it is bigger. So as you can see, it's unworkable completely. 
I do have uh, some of these crow's feet attachment types, um, which do offset the wrench and would, you know, theoretically allow it to work, but, and they fit. So, but, you know, but frankly, they're a bit dodgy, um, nothing like a good socket. And I, you know, as I sort of tried it just for the sake of it, I could feel it was starting to open up and that's how you get a rounded bolt head. So um, for this uh, much talk, you must have a, a good quality and closed socket. Really, there's no alternative. So what I did was I went around the other side and I did that bolt up using the torque wrench, um, just where there's more room to work and I could use the uh, the socket and got a feel for the tightness, just, you know, just uh, judging it really um, by feel. Um, and then I went back and I did the other one immediately afterwards, you know, using the same tool with the same feel uh, with the breaker bar. So I think that's, that's good enough. Uh, next, I reattach the hydraulic lines. Um, if you're replacing these O-rings, then uh, now's the time. I just gave mine a bit of a clean, but I think they're fine. Uh, these fittings have to be uh, hooked into their retaining plate before they all go in as sort of one assembly. Um, once all together, the Torx bolt threads back in and you can tighten it down with a ratchet um, as the bolt is done up, the plate will push the fittings in, but just keep an eye on that it all goes in square and it doesn't jam up anywhere. Um, I have a small quarter inch torque wrench um, that was ideal for this. Uh, it's about the same size as my little ratchet and the torque spec on this bolt is 23 newton meters. Now I was making progress. The subframe can be lifted back up about now and that little uh, plastic clip reattached to the power steering line. Now, as the frame gets lifted back up, it should return to the same position on the chassis that it was before. Now, the circle is quite obvious. Uh, there are holes at the inside which are for alignment pins, and uh, technically you're supposed to use them. The, the, work, the Ford Workshop manuals instruct you to use this, the special pins, um, but it's really very easy to check visually uh, because you can see the clean and dirty area where, they, uh, where it's been all its life. And the alignment uh, should not have actually shifted in the case of this video example, because you'll recall that the front bolts have only been loosened and not actually removed. So they're still holding the geometry true. Once you're happy, the uh, the big bolts go back in, uh, thread them all the way. And also don't forget about the little pressed steel brackets that go between. And you get the little bolts at the back end too, before you go talking the main bolts, just to uh, hold the position right. Then I tighten the front bolts back up. I didn't torque them just yet, but just to remove the gap that we introduced before and to get the geometry back level at all four corners. And then finally, it's time for the big torque wrench again. The Ford spec for all of these big bolts is the, uh, the highest in this job. It's 142 Newton meters. So lots of fun. Just uh, make sure that that socket is on dead square. But this time there is a lot of space uh, for you to hold the socket end. So you, what you do is you push on that while you pull on the other end of the wrench, if that makes sense. Um, and that will keep it all square. Uh, same for the front ones, where you need that long extension again. That's kind of fun, honestly. And the 10 millimeter bolts on the brackets are only 10 Newton meters, which is pretty low uh, from one extreme to the other. And then that's it. Uh, make sure you have in fact done all the bolts properly, but then the support can be lowered and removed. More work to do though. Back inside the cabin, the steering wheel shaft needs to be reconnected uh, this, you know, to the, to the coupling. Uh, before doing so, there's a maintenance job on these cars that involves lubricating the, uh, the telescoping uh, steering. They, they call it a compensator here with the silicone grease. I did a video on that um, just years ago, if you're curious. Anyway, it's worth doing it again while all this is apart. And to position it correctly, uh, you're supposed to use a 70 millimeter long spacer like this at the top half uh, because the articulating connector doesn't find its correct position on its own. So with it guiding the, uh, the height or the, the extension, you can flip this connector back in place. And uh, by the way, the steering wheel should be centered and uh, so should the rack. Um, otherwise, this isn't going to work. Uh, so you could get yourself in a mess here. But yeah, I would have thought that's obvious. And then the bolt can go back in, uh, more thread locker on here, by the way, and uh, tighten it back up. It's a bit laborious because it's an awkward um, thing to access and you're clamping the connector around the coupling shaft so it doesn't exactly do up by finger, uh, but you'll get there. And then 
at the end, the, uh, the torque spec on this one is 20 newton meters. Don't forget the other bits to reconnect. The restrictor on the gearbox has to go back in place. Uh, the torque on both of its bolts is 80 newton meters. Uh, don't do up the uh, the one before you've put it back into position and you're ready to tighten them both. And the downstream um, oxygen sensor plug, uh, I'm just using some electrical spray here to clean and coat the connector while it's exposed. There's not really any need for that though. And uh, clip it back in how it was on the subframe. Now, I needed to um, complete the fluid flush. And remember at this point, I've plugged the lines back into the rack and I've flushed the pump side before I did that. But it still remains to flush the return hose a little bit. So if you're not worried about this flushing, then you can just skip this step. But if you want to see it in more detail, then again, I have that separate video linked below. Uh, basically, that return hose, which I disconnected before, you, you can see I've shoved it into this soda bottle. And I'm just going to repeat the earlier step of running the engine for a few seconds. Um, see the clean fluid coming out into the bottle. That's a new fluid that's now made its way all around the system from the tank. And the only reason you can't run it longer is that the tank is emptied that quickly. Um, and then I started to uh, just turn the steering wheel um, and action the rack back and forth. If you do this with the return hose still disconnected, it's going to continue to sort of flush the system um, because, you know, more fluid's going to be coming out of that hose. But the main point of this is to bleed the new rack, which will have both uh, sides of it still empty of fluid, which is to stay uh, uh, full of air. So you need to do this uh, quite a few turns. It just turn the wheel gently lock to lock about maybe 20 times. What I did was I did it about 10 times as part of the flush. And then I drained the tank one last time, uh, put the hose back on and then continued with the final refill um, and the engine running this time to so as to uh, make use of the pump um, and uh, you know start testing the whole system running under pressure. And I did the remaining 10, uh, 10 turns. You just want to have a look around the line connections and anything else you've disconnected, uh, not to mention the rack itself, um, at the uh, rack bar boots to check for any leaks. Mine all look good. So the uh, the last thing is to connect the tie rods back up. Now, if you're using the same hardware, then it's enough to just turn them back on uh, the same number of turns as before. Uh, that won't be quite exact, but it's close enough. Um, otherwise, you would have needed to have taken uh, measurements um, of the, uh, the extension length. And I like to use some anti-seize on the threads uh, to try to ward off corrosion and it will uh, make life easier for the alignment guys as well. Now the nut on the uh, outer rod tie spindle is the last job for the torque wrench. That's 40 newton meters on this one per Ford. And as to the locking nut on the inner rod, uh, it does need to be snugged up. The torque is 45 newton meters if you want to do it, but I wouldn't worry too much about it if you're driving straight to an alignment place. Uh, which you will certainly need to having done this work and that's it test drive the car somewhere quiet and uh, check that the uh, new rack is smooth and that the power assist is working how it should um, also keep an eye on the power steering fluid level um, and for leaks as you drive the car over the next uh, week or so okay i hope that was helpful have fun out there